Amen. And all the people will say it together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask Pastor Sharon to come to the front to do the offering for us today. Hallelujah. Amen. Make time. 
Jesus, we, we take the Bible and so God, leave foolishness behind, leave your childishness behind. Put Jesus first is here, hallelujah. Say the Lord.
declare that there you are in the midst of us. We acknowledge your presence here this morning. We acknowledge, Lord God, your presence in our lives, in our homes, in our families. Almighty God, we thank you that you, O oh Lord God, have begun this good work in us, will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we can assemble this morning in your name. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will gather this assembly with your presence. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for all that you have in store for us this year. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this year. For crowning this year, Lord God, we just thank you, Father. Thank you that your word prevails in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. We thank you, Lord of oh God, that as we keep looking to your word, we are changed, we are transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, the glory which never fades. You've declared this year, O oh God, be the year, O oh Father, of supernatural glory. Amen. And Lord, O oh God, grace for divine happiness. Amen. So we thank you, O oh Lord God, in advance Amen. for all that you have in store for us. Thank you so much, O oh God. Father, we live our lives with gratitude and thankfulness unto you. In all things, O oh God, we give you thanks. In all things, we give you praise. We give you glory, honor. All the worship, it all belongs to you, O oh Lord. Jesus, wonderful day. I pray, Lord, O oh God, this morning as I will share your word with your people, that you'll anoint my vocal cords, O oh God, to share your word with each and every one this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. It's not about us, but it's all about Jesus. We thank you so much, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you rule. Thank you, O Lord God. All power, all authority, all dominion, it all belongs to Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful name, all the people of God said,
Now, I do want to brush up just on two things that I want you to note. Um, okay, I mentioned to you, I think, in the week that our daily texting, only the daily texting service, in other words, the daily message you receive from your cell phone, okay, we will resume that on the 17th of January. Amen. Praise God. And uh, because there's some things that I have to believe that God is really speaking to my heart about. When we start, we're going to start with something new, something fresh. Amen. Amen. So, all I can say is watch this space. Amen. Praise God. So, bear with us with the daily text message. If you're not receiving the daily messages, um, I haven't gone on holiday. Still around. Amen. Praise God. So, God is busy. And I will share with you later, probably next week, of all the other things that God has laid on my heart, on our heart, family, for this year. Amen. Now, to, I asked you last week, I said, if you can, you can get hold of a diary for the year 2022. Or if you can't get one, get a notebook. Just a blank notebook. And on the inside cover, on the cover of the notebook, write down all the things that you believe in God for. Do you remember? Write all those things down. They say, but Pastor, if I've got 50, well, praise God. Go to 100, go to 1,000 if you want. Because God will surprise you. God is not stingy. Amen. Religion has robbed us. It's not, it's not a sin to ask God for something big. It's not a sin to trust Him for something big. Come on, somebody. I think I'm in the wrong place. You serve a big God. So don't be shy to make big requests. And believe God big. Believe Him in a big way. I said to you, you write all those things down. And then you go, you take some time, you go in your Bible, and you go look for promises for the fulfillment of what you believe in God. Look for all the promises. Meditate on it. Speak it. In other words, you're speaking your hopes. You're speaking them into being. You're speaking them into reality. You pray when you pray, pray the scriptures. I said to you, God will surprise you how he answers. The things that you trust in, that you want as number one priority, you'll be surprised if God gives you number 99 as the first priority. And you'll be surprised how God will start. Come and talk to me. Amen. As you do that, that is how you engage with God. Because God wants to do so much. You build your confidence in God. I said to you two things. The first thing I said, it will be a year of divine Suddenness. A year of divine suddenness and unexplainable blessings. And then the other thing I mentioned was that it will be a year, I want you to highlight this, it will be a year of divine shifts, a year of divine liftings, a year of divine promotions, a year of amazing victories. That's what God has in store for you in the year 2022. Amen. And this morning, I wanted to go actually speak to you on the subject of direction, correction, protection, and preservation. But this morning, God led me to speak about you being destined to manifest His glory. So that's the subtitle of my message this morning. You are destined to manifest God's glory. You are destined for it. It's your destiny. Amen. It's your destiny. You are destined to manifest God's glory. One of the things I shared with you last week when Jesus spoke and he said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The word light, when you translate it directly from the Greek, 
but means that which makes manifest. See that Jesus says you are the light of the world. And the definition of light is that which makes manifest. What are you going to manifest? The glory of God. Now you may say, but pastor, I'm in a dark place. Yes, that's where light shines. Listen, the lights are on in this facility. If I turn another light on, you're not going to, you just see that there's something shining, but you won't see how bright that light is. But if it's dark and you use the very same light, it shines brighter. So you may find yourself in a dark place. But that's where you're going to shine. Come on, talk to me. The prophet Micah says, even in the dark, the Lord shall be my light. God is your light. You are destined. So if you're destined for something, there's nobody that can rob you of it except you yourself. You are destined to manifest God's glory. Go with me quickly to the Gospel of Luke, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 12. Hallelujah. Somebody say this here. Yeah. I am walking with the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Right, the King James, Luke chapter 12, and from verse number 11. Jesus says, now, when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. The year 2022, you will be taught of the Spirit. I shared with you last week about how important it is for us to be committed to a life of prayer and study of the Word. And as you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, you'll find He will teach you and He'll lead you, He'll guide you. The Passion Translation of the same verses that I read says this, and remember this, I like this, and remember this, when people publicly accuse you and forcefully drag you before the religious leaders and authorities, do not be troubled. The year 2022, God says to you, do not be troubled. Tell your neighbor, do not be troubled. He says, don't worry about defending yourself. Maybe last year you tried defending yourself. But this year you're going to do it differently. Because Jesus says, don't worry about defending yourself. Or how to answer their accusations. Simply be confident. So you're going to walk with confidence this year. Confidence not in yourself, but confidence in God. Confidence in the promises of God. That what God has said, it shall be so. Amen. Simply be confident and allow the spirit of wisdom access to your heart. You see, when you, when you yield yourself, when you submit yourself to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, to the word of God, when you do that, you open the door of your heart and you allow access for wisdom to come in. You may find that there's certain, you know, you find yourself in a scenario and normally you do something that way, but all of a sudden there's just a change in you. You deal with it differently now. Because God will give you the spirit of wisdom. He says, simply be confident and allow the spirit of wisdom access to your heart. And in that very moment, 
He will reveal what you are to say to them. In other words, you will confound the wise. Come on, somebody. So, you know, many of us, we've made the transition from the old to the new year. And, you know, you may be in a place where you say, but, you know, Pastor, yesteryear has changed, but, you know, I still find myself where I'm at. But this is what I want to share with you this morning, is that the test that you are going through in life today, it is not for your destruction, but it is for God's glory. Whatever test you are finding, that you find yourself in, whatever trial you find yourself going through, it's not for your destruction. Remember, anything that comes your way needs God's permission. Say, listen, even Satan, when he wanted to touch Job, he needed permission from God. <laughs> he needed permission. So nothing will come into your life without God's permission. And if, it ha if permission has been granted, it means God knows about it. Nothing happens to you that God is not aware of. He's fully aware of it. And why God allows it is because God has, a, listen, God has already approved you before the test. You know, when you look at a manufacturing environment, the factory people manufacture stuff. Before they can even get it out of the factory, they got to put it through tests. And it goes through quality tests. And all of that. And once it has gone through all the tests and it's passed, then they put that stamp on it. Quality approved. QC, quality control. It's been done. So it's deemed fit now for the market. But you, when you became born again, God already put his seal of approval on you. Amen. That whatever happens to you in life, you, God already sees you through it. God already sees you on the other side. Come on, somebody. Amen. So it's not for your destruction. It is for God's glory. And it is for your testimony. Without the test, you can't have a testimony. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. <laughs> What's your testimony? What are you saying? Are you saying what the challenge is saying to you? Or are you saying what God is saying? So whatever you find yourself going through now, it is not for your destruction. Say that with me. It is not for my destruction. It is for the glory of God. And for my testimony of his goodness. Amen. Praise God. You know, and sometimes we find ourselves, we go through stuff, we go through tribulation, we go through periods of testing in our lives. And very often, what we fail to realize is that in those times, God is actually expanding the scope of our mission. A few weeks ago, I shared with you about how each one of us is a missionary. Each one of us is on a mission. And what is our mission? The mission hasn't changed. The mission hasn't changed. The mission is still the same. What is the mission? To make Christ known to the nations. That is the mission. So. Many times you may find yourself going through tribulations and going through tests. But it is God expanding the scope of your mission. Remember, if you go to the book of Acts and you study the, the eighth chapter of Acts, you'll find that in the book of Acts chapter number eight, the Bible says the apostles were scattered. They were scattered. And whilst they were scattered, they preached everywhere they were. There had to be a scattering. If they, listen, if they were still in the same place, 
The message would only stay there. So hence we find that Paul who was then Saul was busy breathing threats on the church and he was persecuting the church and because of persecution we find that people started scattering. They were scattering all over, going all over. And they thought that you know, it was for their destruction, that their lives were at stake, that they were about to lose their lives. But praise God, it was for the glory of God, because when you read it, they preached everywhere they went, they preached. And it's because of that scattering them that you and I are here this morning. So very often, the tribulations come because God is expanding the scope of your mission, because you may be thinking, this way with blinkers, you're only thinking this way, but God is expanding the scope of your mission. Amen. The one thing you must understand as a child of God is that things don't just happen anyhow in the life of a child of God. Things don't just happen anyhow. There's a reason behind every season in our life. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is a time and a purpose for everything under heaven. Come on, there's a season for everything. And as a child of God, there's a reason behind every season of your life. All you've got to do is just trust God. No matter what season you find yourself in, Stay in that season. Maintain your course. Wait. Wait it out. Wait it out. Talk to me, somebody. Wait that season out because change is coming. I don't care how difficult it may be or may seem, but change is coming. Every season is an opportunity of growth for you. You must understand that everything that happens in your life, it is for your growth. You are maturing as a child of God. When you read the Bible, the New Testament, when you read about child, two words that come, that are highlighted there, is the word nepios. Nepios is an immature child, an infant. An infant wears what? Nappy. But we do not stay as babies. Your life started as a baby. Are you still a baby? No. Every time you open your mouth, is someone bringing a pacifier to keep you quiet? If you know what's a pacifier, a dummy. The world has made us think so much like children, they even make dummy sweets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know, we, we were in Durban this past weekend. As we were walking, I noticed every vendor with those dummy sweets. <laughs> Everyone had. So that means there's a lot of people that need dummies. I thought to myself, I said, my Lord, can I imagine myself with a dummy? An adult with a dummy. Now you get some folk like that. They remain in their peers. They refuse to grow up in the things of God. Come on, talk to me, somebody. But how do you grow? You grow with sincere milk. The sincere milk of the word. That is what you are to desire. The word may hurt you, it may hurt you, but it's hurting you with the truth and you're going to grow. But if you can't handle the truth, you're going to keep on sucking that dummy. Come on. 
You read the book of Hebrews. For at this time, you ought to be teachers of the word. So, in other words, it speaks of maturity. You've got to mature in the things of God. He says, strong meat belongs to those who have their senses exercised. Some people, they've got a full mouth of teeth. And they see a piece of steak, they're still scared to eat it because they, they don't know they have canines. They don't know they have molars. They don't know they have pre-molars. All they focused on is the teeth in front. <laughs> no, it's going to break. No, strong meat belongs to those who have their senses exercised. Hallelujah. The second word referring, uh, that speaks of a child in the Greek is the word huos. The huos of God. Huos is a mature child. A child who is of age. Come and talk to me. One who knows what they ought to do. Isn't that you this morning? Isn't that you this year? Come and talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Wait your season out. Your life is following a divine script. You must remember this. The course of your life. The course of your life. Is following a divine script. The psalmist says, in your word, in your book, my years are written, they are recorded. All your years. So your life is following a divine script. Meaning, your life, your life story is divine in nature. Your life story is divine in nature. It is not written by human beings. I don't care what the teacher said to you that you'll amount to nothing in life. I had an opportunity to speak to someone recently who was sharing with me about how people, excuse me, people were saying you'd amount to nothing. You'd become nothing. You're just a waste. And this person was sharing of how God has transformed them and prosper them so much so they send they all all their successes they make sure the people who say they can't know about them. Yeah. a friend of mine I remember when we were in high school in the trip I remember the one day the maths teacher said to him listen you'll amount to nothing you'll become nothing there's no hope for you in life you can't do math. You'll never make it. Two years ago, the same friend of mine, he qualified as a pilot. And he said, I'm looking for Mrs. Bazaibot. I want to I want to show her that I'm flying. She's never been on a plane. I'm flying them planes. You know what I'm saying now? Hallelujah. And the same friend, he's serving the Lord. He's serving the Lord today. That's why I say, your life is not... Don't let people write your life story. Your life story is divine in nature. God is the author of your life. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Your life, listen, your life story, it's a story of faith. When people look at your life, do they see faith or do they see fear? What do they see? Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. When people look at you, they must say, man, that's a woman of faith. Man, that's a man of faith. Hallelujah. Against all odds, you stand your course. Against all odds, you maintain your confession. Hallelujah. Against all odds, you wait it out. Hallelujah. Despite circumstances. 
So you've got to trust the author of your story and don't write your own story. Many times, that is where, that is where we get it wrong. We try to write our story because we think it's supposed to happen this way. When things get uncomfortable and we don't like it, we think, no, 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 I think I need to do this now. I think I need to do that now. Look at Joseph. When Joseph was in the pit, he didn't stop and say, oh, I think I need to get myself out of here. He just trusted God. When Potiphar's wife fabricated a story and labeled it on him, he ends up in the prison. Did he look for a way to get out of the prison? He trusted God. He didn't try writing his own story, trying to break out of the prison. If he tried to break out, what would he could have cost him his life and he wouldn't ever have reached his destiny. So you must understand it. The enemy knows you have a destiny. He knows you have a glorious destiny. So you do whatever it takes. He won't stop until he can get you out of your destiny. Hallelujah. The book of Proverbs 14 verse 12 and Proverbs 16 25 tells us there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Don't write your own story. Let him write your story. The only author in the world that walks with you is the author of the Bible. You know, every book is authored by somebody. Many of those books that you're reading, those authors are long gone dead. And you find some folk, they still read, oh, you know, so and so wrote this, and they follow, they're following the advice of a dead man. And if the author's alive, they do whatever it takes to try and get a hold of the author to find out what he meant when he, when he wrote this in the book. But the only author that walks with him and can teach you is the author of the Bible. If you don't like the way your story is going, speak to the author of your life. If you want to know what's happening with your life and you, you just can't see a way out, speak to the author of your life. His name is Jesus. And it's a glorious story. You find people that came to him with sick people. They brought him sick people. He changed the story. They brought him a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. He changed the story. They brought the lunchbox of a young man which only had a few loaves and a few fish. They brought that to him. He changed the story of that young man. I mean, that young man must have went home and said, Mommy, you know what happened today? You gave me a few fish and a few loaves, but there's a man named Jesus. They gave him my lunchbox. You know how many people he fed with my lunchbox? Not just that, Mommy, because of this lunchbox. Look how many bastards I had. That's the author I'm talking about. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when, when Joseph's brothers threw him into the pit, they thought that it was the end of the road. But they didn't know that what they had done, they were sending him on his destiny, his road to his destiny. That's why when people do nasty stuff to you or say nasty things about you, don't, listen, don't worry about that. I mean, Jesus says here, don't worry about defending yourself. Don't worry about defending yourself. When people think that now I'm going to make an end, it's good let them think they're making an end of your life because God is just about to begin something new. 
Joseph's brothers thought it was the end, but little did they know that they sent him to a place of destiny. Wait not for his brothers, he wouldn't have been sitting as governor of the land of Egypt. So quit being angry about people who wronged you, or people who stole from you, or people who gossiped about you. Quit worrying about that. People who are nasty towards you, quit worrying about that. What is that, Pastor? Sharing or sharing? You gotta leave the old in the old. Leave the old in the old here. This is a new year. This is a new you. This is a new beginning. Hallelujah. You're on your own to destiny. In fact, you should thank all those people that were nasty to you. Thank those people who gossip about you. It's because of them they kept you on your knees. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. Lest you be exalted above. There's a thorn in the flesh that keeps you around. When Joseph's brothers, you know, at the end, when Joseph was revealed to his brothers that he's the governor, remember what he said. What you meant for evil, God turned it for good. Maybe that's what you should tell people going forward. Anybody that says anything bad about you, say thank you so much because you just don't know what you've done. Listen, is that not wisdom? I mean, that is wisdom. You ask, listen, you know when you watch dogs fighting and you speak to these guys who you know were involved in dog fights, they always tell you the most dangerous dog is the dog that signed it. Because one dog will just bark, 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 make a noise. If you look at boxing, look at the boxes when there's a match. You get one that's a big bladder mouth. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Get into the ring. <laughs> Where's all that big mouth? It's gone. One blow. It's gone. So you want to thank them. Say, I thank you so much for what you've just done. The door you, even people that have closed doors to you, say thank you so much for closing the door. Because I'm on my way to destiny. You must understand, embed this in your heart today, today or else. Listen, if you don't do this, these things, listen. It must be that challenges come your way. It must be that persecutions come your way. You cannot partake of the glories of Christ and his resurrection and not and, and, and be exempt from, the, from his sufferings. If he suffered, you're going to suffer too. Most folks just want the glory. They want the good side. But it must be that you suffer because in those times of testing, in those times of trying, you are being refined. Amen. You are being refined. You are being retuned. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is that sometimes God can use your enemies to scatter you from the familiar, from your comfort zone, only to bring you to the place of destiny. God will do that. Because if you're going to keep on sitting in that boat, you're never going to walk on that water. So you got to get out of your comfort zone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes, and that's the thing, change is very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. And sometimes leaving the familiar and, you know, venturing into the unknown, People are normally afraid of that, but we should not be going with fear, we go with faith. Amen, somebody. I mean, look at the case of Moses. Look at Joseph. Look at Esther. Look at Daniel. Look at David. Amen. It may have seemed like none of them would get to the place of their destiny. 
until they were displaced from the comfort zone. So displacement is very important. If you are not this, listen, I shared with you last week, God said to Moses, I will go before you. I will go before you. So, if he's gone before you, that means, if you're still in your comfort zone, you're never going to see the glory. Because you're going to have to be displaced. You're going to have to be put in uncomfortable situations. You're going to be put in things that you're unfamiliar with. But it's all for His glory. Are you with me? You may not like it, but God says that's just the way I like it. And it's just the way I intended it. Remember, He is the writer of the story, not you. Isaiah 66 verse 19. The Lord says, And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to the isles of far, that have not heard my name, neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. This is what God is saying. So whatever we go through, we must realize the purpose is ultimately to declare God's glory. Amen? So even when you're faced with trials and tribulations, it's always for the purpose of manifesting His glory. Manifest it. Manifest means to show forth. It means to reveal. How else will they know the God you serve unless they see His glory in you and through you? There are people that are looking at you, watching your life. Remember, we are living in persons, written by God, being read by men, people watching your life. And say, but this person, how can it be? This person was barely making ends meet. This person was nothing. But look and see what the Lord has done. You'll have them singing that song. There are people watching your life and saying, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed his body, he touched his mind, he saved him just in time. Oh, he's praising his holy, basically on your behalf. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Tell me what does Jesus say? Let your light so shine. Let it shine so much that men may see your deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. I don't care. You could be in a school. You shine in your school. In your workplace, you will shine. In your neighborhood, you will shine. Come and talk to me, somebody. In your family, you will shine. If you're a police officer, in the police station, you will shine. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, you will shine in the glory of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 43 verse 7, the Lord says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. You were created for the glory of God. We are created and prepared for the purpose of manifesting God's glory. Hallelujah. So everything that's happening in your life is for the purpose of manifesting God's glory. Isaiah chapter 60, the Bible tells us that despite the gross darkness that we find in the world, the glory of the Lord shall rise upon us and the Gentiles shall come to the brightness of our rising. This is the time when the church is rising. Talk to me, somebody. There are people that are looking at the church and they say, man, there's a remnant of people in the face of this pandemic and in the face of this economic crisis that are not bowing down. Come and talk to me. They are standing tall. They are standing strong. They're calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. They understand that he's the head and they the body. They understand. Come and talk to me, somebody. It's about time you've got to know who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. 
So no matter how dark situations may sometimes look brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to understand that it will surely end in praise. No matter how dark situations may seem, it's surely going to end in praise. Come on, you've got to speak to yourself this year. You've got to tell yourself, I don't care what's happening right now. I don't care about this trial. I don't care about this test. I know that it's going to end in praise. I know it's for the glory of God. Hallelujah. It's not for my destruction, but it's for His glory. It is for my testimony. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You are destined to be a vessel for the revelation of God's glory. You are destined to be a vessel. A vessel. A vessel. A vessel to which God's glory is revealed. A vessel to which God's glory is made manifest. This is why in everything we give God thanks. Everywhere we go, we proclaim His name. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You give thanks in everything. You proclaim His name wherever you go. You may be in a place where there's serpents and scorpions, but He says you trample them under foot. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, divine happenings, let me just share something. I'm just thinking of something. You know, yesterday we were returning to Newcastle. And on the freeway, I kept asking Pastor Sharon. And one time, Kirk, I think Kirk got irritated because of, you know, I wasn't going very fast. He says, Dad, can you see the speed limit on the freeway? I said, yes, I can see. What does I do? But I didn't want to tell him that, listen, I'm a bit concerned about the petrol making it to Ultra City. You see, because he, before we left, he said, why don't we pass the garage? And I said, no, we went straight. I should have listened. So now I'm coasting. And I kind of told Pastor Sheldon, I said, look now, this is it. You need to find out how far is how to set it. So we tried to check on the phone, the distance. And then I said, no, I don't think so. And then we got to the toll gate. I said to Pastor Sheldon, okay, it's 55, right? get it ready so we can go through. Then I looked and I saw, you know, a sign for the garage going to Moira. And I said, you know what, I think let's go to Moira. What do you think? He said, no, let's try it. Let's go. You know, she's kind of, let's go. By faith, we're going to go to Alpha City. And he asked, and I said, you know what, I said, you know what, it's one thing taking that, you know, taking that step, but what if we stop in the middle of nowhere, no petrol? I rather, you know, rather let's pay, I think it was 30, what, 30, 30 some odd rands, 38 rand or something. And I said, okay, let's pay the 38 rand and at least we've got it. So we went off, put the food. Now we come back. Now we look again. You come back and you're going to the same target. We're going to pay 55. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, we've just paid 38 rand. Now a full petrol, I must go pay another 55 rand. And as we get, then we notice that no, there's actually a partition. This, this one is separate from all the others. So I stopped and I'm giving the lady 55. She says, no. I said, why? What do you mean? She said, no, it's 16 rand. I said, 16? I said, sure, 54 rand. So praise God, I saved one rent. <laughs> praise God. So I've told you how to save a rent now next time you're on the freeway. And you know what's the beauty of it? The traffic was bumper to bumper. All the GP guys were going back for the 
spoons for this week. It was full. I mean, to, to the Marion Hill Plaza, it took us a while to get through. And now here we are, Boy River, and the cars are backed up. Now we come out of Boy River. There's no cars, we just shot through. And all these cars are still lined up. So I say the rain and time. Praise God. Hallelujah. See the ending praise. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in every situation, beloved, God is at work. In every situation, God is at work to cause all things to work together for your good. Amen? Because this, that's why we trust Him, because we know He who began a good work in you will continue doing it until the day of Christ Jesus. And He who began this good work in you is able to bring it to perfection. Not only is God, you know, He's not just, built, but He's bringing you to a place of perfection. That's how you just got to trust Him. Just got to trust Him. Let go and trust Him. And it's only, brothers and sisters, only when we are pruned and purged and prepared that we can be vessels of honor fit for His use. So we've got to be purged. We've got to be pruned. And we've got to be Book of Job 23 verse 10 says this, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I like this. He knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Speaking of purity, hallelujah. So four things I want to end off with. It's number one, you are coming forth as gold. In spite of how difficult the situation may be, in spite of how difficult circumstances may appear, you are coming forth as gold. Number two, what the enemy meant for you for evil, God shall turn it around for you. God is turning it around for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. Though the enemy may think he is persecuting you now. Though the enemy may think he is persecuting you now. You will end up being multiplied. You are you are multiplying. Somebody say multiply. Say God is expanding. He's expanding my area of influence. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord somebody. Number four, last but not least, what looks like tribulation for you right now is working out for your good. And the Lord shall be glorified through your testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is your year, brother. This is your year, sister. This is your year. It is your year. You've got to take it. I shared with you last week. It's a year of make or break. It's make or break. Are you going to say to yourself, I'm not going to break. I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I see myself making it. I see my children making it. I see my family making it. Come on, talk to me. I just may have said, God, your workplace, there's nothing happening. You say, I see us making it. You say about your business, I see it making it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. People may be saying, yeah, because of COVID, businesses have closed this, that, and the other. You say, no, I am making it by the grace of God. I am making it. Hallelujah! I'm making it by the grace of God. Not in the economy of South Africa.
are not in the economy of the world. I'm in the economy of God. And God has got me covered from sun up to sun down. Hallelujah. Many people were crying last year. Insurances didn't want to pay out, etc., etc. And let me tell you, God will always come through for you. Say amen to that somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Give you thanks. Give you praise, Lord, honor, and worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. To the one that broke in last weekend and stole our sound equipment, God bless you. Thank you so much. God's glory will just be revealed. We're going to speak to more people. You know you may have stolen the speakers, but we're going to become louder. We're going to become louder. We're going to become louder. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be upset. I told myself that, I said, I will not become upset. I will not become sad. I will not be disappointed. Because I know it's all the glory of God. You took, God gave me the word right now. You took the speakers, we're going to become louder. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's my God. That's my God. That's my God. Jehovah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Go back here, Sarah Mante Praise God. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is your season, church. This is your year. This is your year. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, every eye closed, every head bowed, let us pray. I think just repeat this prayer with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray with me. Heavenly Father, please grant unto me the grace see beyond the present and see your will being done in my life. Whatever situation I may face, grant me, O oh Lord, the wisdom to discern your voice as you guide me to my place of destiny. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Praise you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of death, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord God Almighty grant you great grace for success. In Jesus' wonderful name, all the people of God say, Amen, 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. Just quickly, as we close in there, um, as I mentioned last week, we, were, we, we, we praise God, really we praise God, because the security and the police told us last week, you'll not get a window pane to replace the window that's thing, because we were concerned about that 
thing being open. Praise God, you were able to source a paint and put it in, and then you got the bars and you put it around the entire church. And what we'd like to do is to put some beams on the outside of the church. So if you'd like to sow towards that, the upgrade of the security outside the building, please, if you're going to sow in the church, make sure you write on your envelope security. If you're doing an EFT, just write as a reference. Put your name and after your name, just type security. So we know that we can allocate that money specifically for that purpose. Amen. Amen. Amen.